So last week, NVIDIA had their financial report come out for their first quarter, and there's not really a lot in here to take away that impacts Nintendo, outside of the fact that it appears that in terms of just them making the Tegra chip for Switch, while they basically had sinking sales uh, compared to last year, where they made 68% less product basically less profits i suppose from nintendo's side of the business on switch that does suggest a dip in sales or at least a dip in orders from nintendo however they did note at the time that they did expect orders to be massively increased for quarter two when it comes to nintendo in particular and beyond that and they didn't really specify why of course because well Nintendo is going to have to tell you why. And I firmly believe this might mean that the Switch Mini and or Switch Pro or both might be going into mass production because the current Switch is actually having an increase in sales year over year, but Nintendo's order for those specific chips is actually much smaller. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it makes sense if they're shifting production to a new line of Nintendo Switches. Now again, this isn't me pushing a narrative here that we're getting the Switch Pro and Switch Mini this year. I don't know, but we have some words on this from a financial call uh, that came out, and here is what some folks at NVIDIA had to say about the situation. So Timothy Akuri says, okay, thanks. And then just as a follow-up, can you give us some even qualitative, if not quantitative sense of the $320 million incremental revenue for July. How that breaks out is the thinking sort of that the data center is going to be flat to maybe up a little, and pretty much the remainder of the growth comes from gaming. Thanks. Colette Crest says, yes. So when you think about our growth between quarter one and quarter two, yes, we do expect in terms of our gaming to increase. We do expect our Nintendo Switch to start again in a sizable amount. Once we move into quarter two, and we do get at this time, expect probably our data center business to grow. Toshia Hari says, thank you. As a quick follow-up on the gaming side, Colette, can you characterize the product mix within gaming? You saw it in the current quarter. You cited mix as one of the key reasons why gross margins were down year over year, albeit off a high base going into quarter two in the back half. Would you expect skew mix within gaming to improve or stay the same? I ask because it's important for gross margins, obviously. Thank you. Colette Crest responds, yes, when you look at our sequential gross margin increase, that will be influenced by our larger revenue or larger revenue and better mix, which you're correct is our largest driver of the gross margin. However, we will be beginning the Nintendo Switch back up, and that does have lower gross margins than the company average, influencing therefore our quarter two gross margin guidance that we provided. As we look towards the rest of the year, we think the mix and the higher revenue again will influence and likely rise our overall gross margins for the full year. Then Jen Sun Hung had this to say, and our notebook growth is going to be really great because of the Max-Q design that we invented and the last couple of quarters have also intersected with overlapped with the seasonal slowdown. That not so, but build that seasonal build of the Nintendo Switch and we're going to go back to the normal build cycle. So the biggest thing to take away from this is that Whatever's being worked out for Nintendo Switch is going back into mass production. Now, this could just be standard Switch Tegra things, uh, although why it's down year over year when the sales of Switch are up doesn't make any sense. Uh, but whatever, maybe that just means that they had enough chips stocked up that they didn't need to build a bunch of them for early in 2019. But uh, a lot of this is based on orders from Nintendo, and Nintendo clearly has a massive order coming in for Q2, probably Q3 and Q4. I mean, we know the games coming this year, right? You know, just the games alone are reason enough to expect a massive increase in orders from Nintendo. But it also could be that there are new chips, and they're not going to, NVIDIA is not going to tell you that, right? NVIDIA is not going to come right out and be like, oh yeah, we expect an increase in orders from Nintendo because they're ordering new chips, because they're ordering new technology, or because we're doing a die shrink or whatever. They're, they're not going to come out and say that because that would be um, announcing something essentially before Nintendo does. Uh, this is the kind of corporate speak you normally see from chip manufacturers in the past 
when PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X were becoming a thing and were being rumored, this is kind of what started the whole rumor, is AMD and the chip manufacturers kind of referencing, hey, we expect a huge increase in orders during this weird quarter in the middle of the year, even though that doesn't make any sense because they should be making platforms the whole time. Well, why would you have a massive influx? Well, because they're doing something new that's typically... Uh, the go-to here now it's also possible that again it could just be a die shrink and we're not going to see anything significant uh changing with switch just maybe a new a new smaller more power efficient chip inside the base switch and they just leave it at that and never tell anyone about it i don't know what i do know is that they're expecting massive orders from nintendo the rest of the year obviously it's interesting to note that also nvidia says like their gross profit margins per those are like smaller than most uh, that lets you know that Nintendo actually struck a very good deal with NVIDIA to get the margins lower than what NVIDIA typically gets from outside companies. But hey, you know what? Those savings are passed on to us and we end up with a cheaper system, um, potentially a more powerful system than maybe we would have got if they had gone the other way with AMD. And this isn't me sliding AMD. AMD does fantastic stuff. I mean, look what's happening with the PlayStation 5 and likely the next Xbox with AMD technology. It's going to be crazy, navvy, and the Ryzen technology and all that heck. I, I literally use a Ryzen 2700X in my editing computer, so I'm well aware of what AMD's got going on out there. But still, this is going to be very interesting. Um, again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you Switch Mini and Switch Pro are definitely coming this year. Yes, where there is smoke, there's generally some sort of fire from Bloomberg and Wall Street Journal, Japanese outlets like Nikkei. All these places are basically telling us that the Switch Mini and a Switch Pro or an upgraded Switch or a variant of Switch is coming uh, but no one really knows when, and no one really knows when Nintendo's going to talk about it. We know that Nintendo has publicly stated that they're not going to be talking about hardware at E3, so maybe that kind of takes that expectation off the table. Uh, but I don't know. I kind of want to just bring up this conversation one more time because we're not going to get, I think, any new information on a Switch Mini or a potential Switch revision until Nintendo announces it. I think this is one of the final times we're going to hear a piece of news that in hindsight, you know, six months from now might have been a reference to the Switch Mini and Switch Pro without being able to say the names. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Personally, I kind of expect the Switch Mini to launch by the end of this year. I don't know about the new model Switch or the Switch, you know, Deluxe or Pro or whatever it's being called, Switch 2. Uh, but I do think the Switch Mini will end up launching in time for Pokemon Sword and Shield. I think it makes a lot of sense. Try to get a $200 Switch out there. Uh, that's just my, you know, predicting that Nintendo knows how well Pokemon's going to sell, especially if there's a $200 version of Switch out there. That being said, I'm going to just toss it to you guys. I really want to know your thoughts on all of this. I also want to remind you to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Bundle giveaway through the Gleam. I link down in the description. It is a 50,000 subscriber giveaway. So if we ever actually hit 50K, which has been a little weird. We've been ebbing and flowing over the last few months. Like, uh, I think it was, not last month. Last month, we ended up gaining four or 500 new subs. The month before, we lost 200. This The last month, we lost, like, 140. Uh, there's been a lot of purging going on. And YouTube, by the way, like, this isn't even me saying, like, oh, my gosh, the channel is doomed. Well, on the 14th of May, not everyone's aware of this, uh, the gaming subscribers and YouTube subscribers were kind of kept separate. Uh, so your total subscriber count on your channel was right, uh, but they kind of separated out. So like because my channel is listed in the gaming category, uh, there are subs here, and then I might have had some subs before we were listed in the gaming category. Well, they combined them all together, and when they did that, it caused massive sub drops at a lot of gaming channels, mine included. Uh, another notable one who's actually spoke out publicly on this would be like Rich from Review Tech USA as well, has just been consistently losing tons of subscribers every single day, as have I. And I think part of this is because in merging the two sub counts, YouTube's just going through a massive purge of the subs since they happen to be looking at them this month. Uh, so a lot of my sub loss over the past, you know, when people look at the sub count, they're like, when's he going to hit 50K? Why does he keep going down? Well, again, um, there's just a lot of purging going on as YouTube is basically eliminating the gaming only subscriber thing and just making it one universal subscriber count, which maybe that'll actually help with um, reach of videos, maybe more notifications, more recommended, uh, more times my video actually showing up in your subscription feed, even though it should just be by being subscribed. It's not always the case, this is where I remind you, hit the bell icon that's supposed to guarantee you get notifications, but it doesn't, so that sucks. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, I'm just, 
letting people know not to panic. I've had a few people message me like, hey, why do you keep losing subscribers? Like, even if you have a content, you know, some a video with misinformation, you still have all this other great stuff. Uh, and honestly, it's just that. It's that YouTube's combining things together and subscriber purging, and we're just not gaining new subscribers at a faster rate than the purge. It'll eventually turn around, I expect, sometime in June. Uh, usually, June's a huge month for us anyways because of E3, and we gained a bunch of subscribers, so... I'm not really worried about it. It's kind of a temporary lull. So for those of you out there that have been sitting there entered in this giveaway for like six plus months and you're like, man, is he ever actually going to give it away? Yeah, because I do firmly believe we will hit 50,000 subscribers sometime at some point here in 2019. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.